for joining me today. We are going to make this cute, adorable little woodsy gnome. I made him out of a sweater, and I'll show you it in a minute. I've already cut it up, of course. And I made feet, little toes. They turned out so cute. And I did this like at 10 o'clock at night. And his nose and the fabric for his feet are the same. So if you have that, then you're doing great. And I will use, I will leave a link below where I get that at Joanne's, what it is. And I made this little um, stick, uh, tree branch, whatever. Um, and I'll show you how I did that too. And I didn't glue it in there. I'm gonna show you how I did his arms and um, the little bird. I didn't want to glue it on because I might use it for another um, project, but I took a pin um, from my sewing and cut the head off and just poked it in there. And then I can just poke it into his hand. If I were to sell this, I would glue it on. I wouldn't leave that pin. Um, but here's the sweater that I used. And I went to a thrift store, so check out your thrift stores. Your rummage sales are awesome. You can get them for really cheap. And once you start looking, you're gonna see stuff and you're gonna say, oh my gosh, that would make such a cute gnome. So I just loved all the texture and the colors. And I'll show you how I used the sleeve for his body. And that worked out great. So that was all green. Um, or if you wanted to just use this all for hats, um, you can buy another green fleece that would go with the body. Okay, so stay tuned and we're gonna get going and we're gonna make this adorable little guy. You can't tell me he's not cute, cause he is. I'm so excited. Feet. Okay, let's get going. Thanks for joining me today. Okay, let's get going and make our little woodsy gnome. If you guys have a name, I would love, I have a hard time. I'd like to name my gnomes, but I have a hard time with that. So I'm trying to work on that. So I'm gonna show you how I made his cute little feet, his little toes, and his hands are kind of the same way. I, 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 do, I do them the same, but when I stitch the sections, I um, start at one point on the toes and another point on here. So the way I do my hands, we're just going to start out with that. Um, I take a bigger section of my fabric that I get from Joann's. It's like an athletic and it's not square square, but it's about, you could do 10 by 10. And then you're just going to get, you want to make sure you have the right side because there is a right and wrong side. And we're going to do it on the, we're going to hold like a triangle. So you're going to take some stuffing and you don't want too much, but you want enough so that you can get it bulky like this. So we're going to fold it in half and then take our corners and bring them to that and then gather it and make sure you have all of your ends. Hang on to it like this. And I have like flesh colored embroidery floss. And you're going to tie it kind of just like we do our noses. You're going to wrap it around. And then you're going to wrap one side around again and pull it. And then you're going to hang on to it with your hand. And then you're going to tie a knot. And I use the whole, all six strands of the embroidery. So you tie a knot and then we're gonna tighten it. So this is our top, this is our bottom. And that's where I'm mainly pulling from. I will pull from the sides because I wanna get um, this kind of shape, but a lot smaller. So it takes a little bit to get it. If you want it bigger, then, um, you might have to stuff it a little bit more. So it kind of depends on how big you're gonna make your toes. And this is what it'll end up like, is like that. So I don't do a whole foot. Um, I'll Maybe I'll try to work on that and see if we can do a whole foot. So I just kind of keep pulling it 
and then I will before I start stitching it I will do the other one like this so I can make sure that they're about the same size So then we have it like that. We'll put a little bit more. And then you're going to take and you're going to make sure your knot is like either on, on one side, on the top or the bottom in the middle. And then you're going to take and I use a needle and you're going to separate your strands. So you have three and three. And this is kind of how I unwind it because we need to have four um, pieces of, of string, six or four uh, sections or whatever, to make our um, divisions in the foot. So just get this unwound. It takes a little bit. Okay, and then do the same to the other one, and I use my needle to separate it. And if you have like a crochet thread um, that's flesh colored, that would work better. This is the only flesh color that I had. So what you need to have, and this works out better because you have to have the four um, sections. So if you just use something that you couldn't um, separate, you're going to have to have four pieces of string or two pieces, two ends. Okay. So now that we have that all separated and it, you kind of got to keep them out of your way. So you're going to start at one end. And this is still kind of wound up. So you're going to take the a string that's closer over here, okay? And you're going to thread your needle. And you're going to wet it if you have to. And then you're going to take your, from this side, you're going to wrap it around. And you're going to go right from here. You're going to go to the other side just opposite that and try to come up in the same spot where your thread is, okay? And then just pull that and make sure you have your thread in there enough. And then you want to just get that corner of it and pull it and then wrap it and do that again, go in the same spot on the opposite side and come up on the top side where your thread is. And don't worry if that isn't tightened up yet. And I'm losing my thread, which isn't, I'm done. So you're gonna do it twice. So once you pull that and my loop, where did my loop go? All the way over here. So you want to get that in the same spot and then just pull it and it'll tighten up that first loop that you did. So then you're going to leave that alone and then you're going to go and find one that's closest to the opposite side. Do so you want to do this side now? And let me get my thread and my needle. I'll put my little thimble on. And I was going to take my radio robe off. <laughs> so then go, go on the opposite side with your needle. You're wrapping it around. And come up in the same spot, kind of right toward the edge. Okay. And then you just want to get the corner of it. 
and then wrap it around again. If it doesn't get tight, that's okay because once we get it wrapped the second time, we'll tighten it up. And then you're gonna come up in the same spot and then you're gonna make sure those strings are on top of each other and that they don't slide off and then you're gonna pull and that tightens up both of them. And then you're gonna take that one and leave that one alone. And then you're gonna take your two middle ones and it doesn't matter which side you start on. And then you're gonna take, thread your needle. And then we're gonna try to go on this side. So we're gonna do one closer over here and then one closer over, so one over here and one over here, and that'll give us the three. So I got my threads or, um, I think I got the wrong thread, yep. I know it gets to be, you gotta keep your thread straight, but it's not that bad. It, I mean, once you know how to do it, it um, it's just really keeping and getting the threads separated and then trying to thread your needle. Okay, so we're gonna go wrap it around the opposite side, just underneath where that thread is coming from the top. And then you're gonna poke it through the same spot. Okay. And you're gonna pull your needle up. And then move that over so you can get, so these are gonna be three equal spots. I'm trying not to lose my thread out of my needle. And you're gonna pull it and then you're gonna do it again. You're gonna go wrap around the same area, needle in the same spot on the bottom, come up in the same spot where your thread is coming from. And then pull that, make sure your threads are on top of each other, both rows, and pull it tight. Isn't that cool? That is so, I just, I, I don't know, I was just trying to figure, I thought I want to do feet. And I thought, you know, I'm going to try the way I do my nose and kind of try to do it a little differently and section them off. And it worked out awesome. I love the way it turned out. Um, so then we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. We're going to go underneath from the bottom. We're wrapping it around. And then your needle's going to come up where your thread is. And this one is going to be more on this side over here. And then you're gonna pull it and wrap it around again. Needle goes in the same area. And then make sure those threads are on top of each other. And my, I'm gonna take my needle out. Try to move that over. So there's his feet. If that was too big for you, you could do another section. And then when you put it on him, you're probably not gonna see that he's got like six toes, but who cares? So then I take and take all these strings, make sure you have them tight enough and take all four of them, take two and two and tie them in a knot. I do like Couple knots, do the surgeons, loop it over two, three times. And then we're going to make sure our ends are all the same length so we can put them on the needle. And if your threads were too short, what you can do is you're gonna go in where your knot is and you're gonna come out in the middle in here. You're gonna come out and you open all this. So if your needle was, if your thread was too short, put your needle in first, poke it through, and then thread your needle. So you can do that with any sewing. If you're sewing something that needs to be stitched up, 
and you don't have enough thread to like pull it through and hide your knot, this is how you can do it. And then you got to try to thread your needle. Because I get... Okay. There we go. So then you got to make sure you have your ends in your needle and you're going to pull it out through that opening right there. And then you're just going to cut that off. And then we're going to take and cut this excess off and make sure you don't cut your toes. And then trim that down and that will be hidden underneath. And you can figure out what side you want as the top and the bottom. Okay. And I will show you how I, I will just kind of tell you how I'm doing the, the hand. And I'm going to take a break and I will be back. Okay, I'm back and we are going to finish our um, woodland gnome. And we worked on the feet, and I'm going to show you what I did with the feet. I took some um, felt, and I covered up this part on the bottom on both sides. And I just cut this piece and hot glued it on just to protect it so the thread doesn't come undone. And it just kind of finishes off a little bit. But you can do whatever you want to, if you don't want to do that. Um, and what I did on this one was I did it and I used some makeup because you could kind of see it, but I was going to do some like eyeshadow and stuff between his toes to make his feet look a little dirty. So I thought that was kind of cute. So we're just going to glue that on and I just cut a piece and made sure it wrapped around um, both sides and the end part right there and then pull that and if there's any ex excess we'll cut it off and you gotta be careful so you don't cut your toes the material of your foot and then I would do what I did with eyeshadow so that you can't really see it. It depends on how you put your foot on the bottom of your gnome. So let me show you how I did the hand. And when we did the foot, I started, I did this side over here first and then this side and then did the, the middle and then sectioned it off. So I've actually got six toes, but this one in the middle was kind of big, so it doesn't matter. It's a woodland gnome. You can do whatever you want to. If you want less toes, um, if you want bigger toes, you just have to take your sections bigger. Um, so I'm just kind of giving you the idea. I'm going to try to figure out how to do a foot um, too. So I'm going to take, now with the hand, I kind of started over here. So that's like his thumb. And then I'm going to go and I have my thread from here and I'm going to go right on the opposite side and come up where that thread is. So right there. Okay. And we're going to wrap that around twice. And you can, and I was thinking of this, um, before I was going to start finishing this video. Um, and what I'm going to do here is, because I don't want that thread to slide off, so I'm going to take my needle, if I can get under there, and get on this side of it so it will pull it this way, okay? But what you can do is just put one long thread and just do like you're you know, I would do, I'd section here and then I'd go on to the other side. So you could do it that way. 
Um, I guess sometimes you think of when you're doing something and it, you do it differently and then when you start doing it then you think of an easier way. So, And then we're going to wrap this around again and go through the same spots. And when I do it twice, just because when I do it the first time, it doesn't get tight enough. And then when I pull it the second time, you're able to tighten it up. And then I don't even knot it. Okay, so we're going to grab another set of strings because I have four, just like on my foot. And they've kind of gotten lost a little bit. So just take one of your strings. If it's one of the ones you've used, it's probably going to be okay. And now we're going to go and I'm going to just take up a little stitch here because I'm not quite in the right spot. Then I'm going to go around to the other side again come up at the same spot where my stitch is and then make sure your thread is where you want it to be on the section my threads getting a little short and then come up around the same do it the same thing again That one is a little too big of a section for me, so I'm just going to loosen it up with the eye of my needle and kind of try to slide it over just like that. And now I have to find my thread. So just like that. And then we're going to do one more over there. So I have to find a long enough string here. So I have to go over to that spot. And then you're going to go around to the bottom side again. And then come up where your thread is. Uh, let's see if I have enough thread to do it again. I'm gonna move it over. I'm losing coming off the end. So with this, you probably want to use a short needle if you have shorter threads. And I just barely got it through. Okay, so now we're going to tie these. This one is a little short. And if they're both not the same um, hand or, you know, that's okay. You can, you can make them a little different, however you want to do it. If you want them to look the same, then you have to be mindful of that when you're taking your sections. Okay, so now we're going to hide this. And I'm going to show you, this is the arm I did, and I'm going to show you why I did what I did. And I have a wider in there. So let me get my, I have to put my needle in here first because my threads are kind of short and I kept this long so we're not cutting this off and I'm going right in 
here with my needle and gonna poke that through and then I'm gonna thread it because my threads are kind of short. So this is how you can still hide your thread if it's too short and you just don't want to leave the knot. exposed and I'm trying to get all of these threads through the eye of the needle okay So then I pull it out and then cut that off, excess off and you can cut that. So what I did and this wire, you can use any, it's, it's a lot stiffer wire and I don't know if I had it. It's from the middle of the curlers from the Dollar Tree and I don't think I have one. This is what they look like. And they come with two little plastic like buttons on the end and it's looped like that so that that button gets hooked on there and it, it holds the curler it holds this wire in there so i took it out and used it for something i was making arms for gnomes or whatever but what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take this wire and not that one in this one and I'm going to poke it through the middle here, but I'm going to try not to poke it through all the way through here. So I'm going to only go so far and then I'm going to hot glue it. So it will stay. And then we're going to take all of this excess. And then I took and I have my strip. I cut a strip of black felt. Doesn't matter what color because it's going to go inside of his arm. And I'm just going to start it so that he's got some body to his arm and then his hand it will be bendable. So you're just going to put a little bit of glue on and you're just going to wrap this around and try to get it so it's nice and tight and I only glued it at the start and the beginning or the start and the end of this and then we'll cut that excess off and then glue that so now we're going to cut this off and be careful that you're where you're cutting because your wire is still in there. And nobody's going to see this because you're going to glue this. When you put this in, you're going to glue it around the wrist. So that's how I did the hands was like that. And I've got a little pucker right here and so I might try to fix it but I don't think it's going to be visible so I'm not going to worry about it. And be careful of the needles. And then I'm going to show you how I did his little um, stick here, how I did that. So let's do the body. I'm going to move him over there. I'm not sure if you guys can still see him. So I've got the sleeve because most of the sweater had all the decorative stitching and stuff on it. So I'm trying to figure out because I, if I do this right, I can get two gnomes out of here. So I'm going to, I'm going to cut it. And 
I did this, the way I did this one was I used the whole sleeve and I cut the seam and wrapped it that way, but I'd like to get another gnome out of it. So um, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a quick break and I'm gonna find part of the sweater to make a bottom and we're gonna sew that on. Like kind of like we did our bumblebee gnome and I'll show you how I did it and I'll be right back. Back and I'm going to take, I cut, I put this on my sock and needed to see if I needed to sew it, if it was too big and it's not, it's just perfect. So this is the cuff of the sleeve. So then I put it on here and I cut a circle and I just made sure it was a little bigger than the what I have here so that we have so we can sew it so we have a seam allowance okay so we're just going to take and turn this right side or the wrong side out and then we're just going to pin this if you can do this without pinning it more power to you but I can't <laughs> not when I'm sewing a circle and because I think you would lose you wouldn't be able to hang on to it and get it so you might not sew something sew part of it that's not supposed to be sewed or whatever it's just easier to pin it and it goes a lot quicker and then you're able to see if your circle is too big then you just have to unpin it and just cut it down if your body is too big then you would just have to unpin it and take your um, take the body in a little bit. And this is just perfect and it'll stretch a little bit. Stay tuned for part two. Please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for joining me today.